Okay, we're going to call the uh, meeting to order um, right now. Before we start, we're going to stand for the uh, national anthem, and then we're going to have a moment of silence as well. Welcome everyone. Today we have a uh, special evening that we're going to start off with. I got to avoid that TV. <laughs> and we're going to be honoring the contest winners of the Martin Luther King essay that was performed throughout the township at all the elementary schools. We had quite a few winners. Uh, we had a t quite a few uh, people that participated in the contest from the various elementary schools. I'm going to read off some of the uh, participants. Daryl Campbell, Morby Street School number one. Costanza Dorantes Resendez, Avenel Street School four and five. Tyler Austin, Port Reading School number nine. Jeremiah Crespo, Ross Street School number 11. Jamal Goodridge, Ford Avenue School 14. Kelp Dolce, Indiana School number 18. Peyton Smith, Menlo Park Terrace, school number 19. Samantha Mercado, Claremont Avenue, school number 20. Rudra Patel, one of our district winners, Oak Ridge Heights, school number 21. Asher D'Agostino, Lindcrest, school number 22. trying to pronounce the names as best as I can. <laughs> so you got to work with me. <laughs> you have a Lizzie Ojinuka, Woodbine Avenue School 23, Marion Mustafa, Lafayette Estate School 25, Suma Chudahari, Robert Masiniak School 26. Jade Naskew, also a district winner, Pennsylvania Avenue School 27. And last here is Allison Baldwin, Matthew Jago School number 28. I don't know if I left out Wania Saeed, Oak Tree School number 29. I don't know if I might have repeated that or not. Okay. 
so now? Okay. And with all the partic participants that were involved here, we had a tie. And that was with Jade Naskew, School 27, and Roger Patel, School 21. So we're going to ask them to come up here and to read their essays. So since you're the closest, all right, we'll start off with Jaden. How does Martin Luther King or someone you know inspire you to live according to Dr. King's dream? Dr. King's dream is one every black person wants in America. During Dr. King's time, it was a dream that was harder to achieve. During the time Martin Luther King Jr. was alive, the United States was systematically much more racist than it is now. Due to segregation, white and black people were separated in parts of America. A few examples of these separations were that black and white people went to separate schools, used different bathrooms, and ate in different cafeterias. Despite these issues, Dr. King had faith and dreams that America could change and fight to end racism for good. Dr. King is an inspiration to me and many others who live with his dream in mind. Just like Dr. King inspires me, someone else who inspires me to live according to Dr. King's dream is Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick is a former quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. On September 1st in 2016, Colin Kaepernick took a knee during the playing of the national anthem during the preseason game of the 49ers versus the Packers. He took a knee as a symbol of resistance against the racism many African Americans still face in today's society. Similar to Dr. King, Kaepernick was disliked by many after his actions. Even after getting a lot of hate, fired from the 49ers, and not getting picked up by any other team, Kaepernick stood by his decision and now continues to do more for the civil rights movement. Actions like those of Colin Kaepernick inspire me because I also want to participate in the civil rights movement. I care about the civil rights movement because I want to fight racism and for there to be equality between white and black people across America. As a black boy living in America, when I grow up, I do not want to be judged by the color of my skin. I want to be able to grow up and live a good life. I'm grateful for leaders like Dr. King and Colin Kaepernick because they fight to gain rights for African Americans. Thanks to their bravery, America is becoming a more equal country. Like Dr. King says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. I am young now and don't want my life to feel like it's over anytime soon. So I will not be silent to fight against racism. I will use the different social media platforms I have speak to my friends about racism and continue to learn more. Because one day I hope all men can truly be treated equally. Thank you, Jaden. Thank you very much. And I don't think he'll be silent at all. Okay. Glenn. Um, okay. What's that? This is yours to keep. Okay, congratulations. Okay. All right, here we go. 
Okay, Rudra Patel. Hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Rudra Patel and I'm from Oak Ridge Heights School 21. I'm here to present my Martin Luther King Jr. essay. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He was an influential civil rights activist and the leader in the civil rights movement. He firmly believed that no person deserved to be discriminated due to the color of their skin. Throughout his lifetime, he fought for the fair treatment of the black community. Even during Dr. King's childhood, he was treated differently. For example, his white friend notified him that his dad would not let them play together any longer because Martin was black. That was the everyday life of an African American living in America. African Americans would either have to learn to deal with everyday discrimination, which included having segregated bathrooms, neighborhoods, water fountains, and many more, or to solve the problem. Dr. King chose to solve the problem. After winning a speech competition, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. traveled back on a bus. However, he was forced off his seat so that a white person could sit there instead. He later remarked how that experience caused him to be the most furious he had ever been. He later went on to skip grades 9 and 10 and earn a doctorate. Just like his father, who was a Baptist church minister, Martin became one as well. In 1953, he, he moved to Montgomery, Alabama with his wife, Coretta Scott King. This was where he heard of the American activist, Rosa Parks. After Dr. King heard about Rosa Parks' actions, he joined up with some other activists, and together they started the Montgomery Bus Boycott. Thousands of African Americans didn't ride the buses for over a year. Some of them were even attacked. Dr. King's house was even bombed. Dr. King and many others were jailed multiple times. In 1956, a well-deserved Supreme Court decision banned segregated buses. The bus boycott was one way that Dr. King utilized nonviolent protests, similar to those organized by, Mah by Mahatma Gandhi, who Dr. King deeply admired. People continued to carry out other acts, such as holding sit-ins, where they would sit down and refuse to get up until they were either served or forcefully taken out of restaurants. Not only did Dr. King lead the boycott, but in 1963, he and other leaders arranged a march for equal rights in Washington, D.C. More than 200,000 people joined him to face the injustices against African Americans. They protested minimum wage for underpaid workers. Here, Dr. King, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his famous speech, I Have a Dream. His speech further emphasized his goal for America to become unbiased, a country where everyone is treated fairly despite the color of their skin. He truly believed that every American deserves a chance to live and dream the way, they we, the way they wanted to without their skin color getting in the way. He no longer wanted colored people to be shackled by racism. Not only did his dream claim to end segregation, but also showed how powerful peaceful protests could be. This speech brought immense pressure on the American government, which allowed the civil rights laws to be passed. Even though he was assassinated early at the age of 39, he still lives in the heart of many Americans. His and many others' inspiring actions allows for me, a person of color, to be able to live freely alongside others. Due to, due to the acts of equality he gained, I am able to board a bus and choose whether or not to give up my seat to anyone. I can sit within a classroom and feel equal compared to, other, to others. I can even play with white children without feeling lesser than them. Today, America has laws in place in order to, to, to protect mine and others' freedoms. Only through Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and many other activists who are in support of equal opportunities for everyone, I can have the future that I desire. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s inspiring actions have influenced me to follow in his footsteps. If I ever see anyone being discriminated against because of their skin color, I will try to stand up and stop the bullies. If laws and regulations are unfair, I believe that I could organize a nonviolent protest or join one that already exists to continue Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy. I could even put together a petition. If I get enough signatures, I could show the government that lots of people care about the cause 
and pressured the government to change it. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was an activist who fiercely fought to end discrimination. Through events such as the Montgomery Bus Boycott, March on Washington, and other impactful events, we now live in a world that is more equal than it was just a few years ago, all because of the work of one man. While we enjoy sitting on a bus, eating wherever we feel like it, and getting an education that treats us fairly, we can remember who brought us such rights. Today, everyone can live in the United States of America without Jim Crow laws and segregation. While we still have a long way to go to total equality, I think if we follow Dr. King's teachings, we can make the world a better place. Thank you, Mr. Patel. And, uh, you know, he, he brings up a, they both have brought up a lot of good points. And just for my own little, uh, I would say, observation and my little thing I want to add to it is the fact that what's so important is it starts at home with the parents and what they are teaching their kids, you know? So that's what we need more of as a community. And that's what can make a difference. Um, all right, I'd like to hear from anybody from the, uh, anybody here that wants to have anything to say um, in reference to these particular occasion, feel free to say so now. <clears throat> anybody, go ahead. Well, those essays were outstanding. All the schools had terrific essays. It really was a struggle. We went over and over the, uh, them again, and then finally we pulled everybody, and uh, it came to a tie. So congratulations to everyone else. But I would like to say, I think we're in, the future is looking pretty bright if the words of these young men that we heard tonight really ring true. So congratulations again. I'm so happy you came to the meeting. And uh, please keep on the good thoughts the good deeds in your heart about ending racism forever in this country. Young man, could you come up front, please? <laughs> There's a story that uh, was shared by Dr. King when he visited India. And he was introduced to a group he was speaking at as our fellow untouchable. And he initially was in, insulted until he realized that yes, he was also an untouchable. It is quite apropos that the two winners of the contest this year are two young men who not represent untouchability or uh, the Jim Crow laws, but have represent what it can be as far as moving towards a greater understanding and cohesion among people. And I want to thank both of these young men for what you did, how you wrote, and what you said. Thank you so much. All right, I also thank the uh, principals here for being here and participating as well and keep bringing those students out and, you know, <laughs> educating them, okay? Uh, we also have a uh, little Black History Month video and uh, it was presented by one of the uh, parents of the township. But that introduction, I'm gonna let Ms. Pat Osborne uh, present this to you. It should give you a little bit more background about it. Thank you, Glenn. One of the wonderful things about youngsters and education and parents being involved is that they sometimes produce something that's really incredible. I was sent this video and it was put together by a woman named Mrs. Rivers who resides in Woodbridge Township. And in there you see her two children. And when I put it on uh, my iPad and it played, it just made me so happy to see such a sweet, 
joyous family looking at uh, Black History Month and coming up with an idea that is, uh, how can I put it, educational, but fun. So with that, uh, Megan, can you start it? And I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Thank you. Hey, Pat. Pat, on the sound bar, is it blue? On the sound bar, is it blue? No, I'm just looking at it. I don't know. Anything about this? <laughs> you can tell by my age. <laughs> to have a lesson after Here is Black or African American History Month in the United States. I'm Elise and Jason's mom, Mrs. Griffiths, and we're African American. Our family immigrated here from Africa and Trinidad, a small island on the coast of South America. This month, is an annual celebration of the achievements of African Americans and recognizing our contributions to the United States. You have heard of famous African Americans like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks, who helped change the rights of African Americans in the U.S. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about African Americans who invented some of the things that you use every day, and I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you. Have you thanked an inventor today? By Patrice McClellan, illustrated by Diane Brown. This world is full of inventions, some of them we don't even think about. But if we took the time to think about them, we'd realize we wouldn't want to live without them. You see, inventions, they make our lives much easier. They also make our lives more fun. So we should thank the inventors who invent great inventions, for without them, we might not get anything done. Like for instance, when your mom wakes you up in the morning to let you know it's time to go to school, you stretch and yawn, rub the corners of your eyes, and probably wipe away last night, true. That's when you happen to glance over at your clock and realize you're running a bit late. Well, you wouldn't know that you were if it were not for Benjamin Banneker. He invented the first clock in the United States. So you put on your clothes and you rush into the bathroom. You wash your face and brush your teeth. Then brush your hair. Well, you should thank Lydia Newman for a part of your morning movement as the modern day hairbrush was her awesome idea. Afterwards, you're called into the kitchen for breakfast. This morning, it's cereal with fruit and wheat toast. Well, thank goodness John Standard improved the refrigerator because hot milk with your cereal was pretty gross. And when you're on your way to school, whether you're a bus rider, a car rider, or you walk, you have to thank Garrett Morgan for the traffic light. Otherwise, none of the streets would be safe to cross. Then after you've settled into your classroom and you've taken out your supplies because you're such a scholar, please remember to show love to Mr. John Love for his invention was none other than the pencil sharpener. Now as much as I know you love to learn, you'll admit that sometimes lunch is your favorite time of day. Well, you can thank John Robinson for your lunchbox, but for what's inside it, it's your mom you need to make. And what does mom usually pack into your lunchbox? Tasty snacks that make your belly go yum, like peanut butter made popular by George Washington Carver or potato chips invented by George Trump. Fast forward, the school day is now over. It's been a long time. You're happy to be home. You check the mailbox invented by P. Downey, then chill in front of the air conditioner invented by Frederick Jones. Plus, your teacher didn't decide any homework, so you decided to play a few games on the cell phone. Well, if it wasn't for Henry Samson's gamma electric cell, believe it or not, there would be no cell phone. And these are just a few awesome inventions. There are countless other ones that I didn't even mention, like the doorknob invented by Old Dorsey, 
or a type of guitar invented by Robert Fleming. Sarah Bloom invented the ironing board, and Thomas Stewart invented the mop. Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker, and W.A. Martin, he improved the lock. So now, here's what I want you to do. I'd like for you to take a moment or two and ponder over how life would be if these inventions weren't created for you. Then as you lie in your bed this evening and you think about how your day was spent, don't forget to thank an inventor, then dream about what you would love to invent. We, we hope you enjoyed this story and you learned a little bit more about how African Americans helped shape America. I hope it also inspired you to think about the next thing that you can invent. See you soon. I was hoping Mrs. Rivers would be here with her children, but unfortunately she works in New York City and she's not available. So uh, I hope you appreciated it as much as I did. I, I just think it's inspiring that parents can put things like this together. And uh, it really drives home that all of us can benefit from everybody who lives in this great nation.